Never Have I Ever, a Netflix comedy in its second season about Davy, a girl in high school who is busy navigating friendships, her Indian family, and dating two guys at the same time. Last season, we saw her find closure after her dad's untimely death. This season, her mom wants to take her and her sister, Kamala, from LA to India to be closer to the rest of their family. It's not gonna happen, but we're along for the ride. Also, former professional tennis player John McEnroe narrates the entire show. It's today's episode. This one's gonna be a weird one. Let's get into it. Are you team Ben or are you team Paxton? Like Twilight? Yeah, I mean, basically the writer's room said that this season is completely supposed to be, you're supposed to pick one side of the aisle. It's like completely split in half in the writer's room. They're not sure where to go, but by the end of the season, you should get an answer. Pros and cons. Ben is rich, smart, and challenging. Cons, he's a dick to her. He's been her nemesis in the past, and he has hairy forearms. I'm just listing off (laughs) what the show gives you. Paxton, Paxton Hall Yoshida is his full name. He's hot. He's popular, he's probably good at sex, <laughs> but his cons are that he doesn't have a lot in common with the main character, he, he's bad at school, and Trent Stoinks. Do you know who Trent Stoinks is? <laughs> no. We it... watched some of the first season just when we flipped through it. Was he the character that punched the other one in the face and then was like, oh, sorry, that wasn't a bug. Yeah, he's face. like the dude bro. He's <laughs> right. Paxton's best friend. He's the one who plays COD with him. He's the one who goes on dates with him. Like, the, he's part of the date. <laughs> and they list that as a con? <laughs> Uh, just his name. So how close are you? But look, you, look, 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 look. Before we jump on to the Teen Girl Express podcast that everybody wants to hear from us, um, I just want to be a little bit more critical with this show. I had to keep reminding myself that the main character, Davy, she's a sophomore in high school. So some of her decisions, her mistakes can be written off, right? Yeah, yeah. But what is the plan here? At the end of this episode, spoiler, I'm just talking about the first one of the second season, Ben Aplaya. Um, she decides that she is going to try to dupe both Ben and Paxton into believing that she likes them equally. Well, she does like them equally, but that she's dating them separately, like without them having knowledge of the other one. Problem with that is A, they attend the same high school. B, the classes that she has with them, she sits smack dab in the middle. We, we see one class with her in her history class in this episode, and it's literally Ben, Davey, Paxton, her two best <laughs> friends in front of her. There's no like wiggle room here. So I don't understand how plausibility wise you're saying it just could not happen in real life. Anyone who's ever attended a high school knows how quickly relationship rumors and like people know who's with who. So the idea that these two would be so oblivious when one is super popular and the other one's a super like a nerd enough but like a rich nerd he 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 knows what's going on so is this like ugly betty where like at the end of the first season there was like some super attractive guy that like asked her to marry him and then another guy who was like kind of on the same attractive Paxton's level. been her crush since she was a kid because of how hot he is again this has it, it comes dangerously <laughs> close into following into the netflix kissing booth or the boys I loved before, whatever that movie right, sequel yeah, yeah, yeah. series was, like it falls into that trap. As in, like people are just talking about guys as snacks and how big their <laughs> penis is and like how good at sex they probably are, even though they're virgins. Who are talking about? It, it, but the thing that saves it, the thing that makes it bearable to for me at least, right. because I'm sure like there are girls out there who just love this, um, is the fact that the main actress is actually a kid. No offense to Nassim Padra or the um, Pen15 Club, but it really is nice to see a kid playing a kid. Right. Uh, or at least, you know, within yeah. five years of that <laughs> age. Um, and then also you're dealing with an ensemble cast as opposed to it just being her in every scene being the focus of it. Like you've got the mom storyline, you as a doctor, you have the sister's storyline, you have the uh, best friends who have their own like characterization part of them. Mm -hmm. One is a lesbian working out her relationship who is terrible with pop culture. Um, And then you have the two guys who also have a little bit of personality behind them. Ben, we got last season, he had Andy Samberg being his narrator. That was a funny episode. So it's not just on her to do, like her storyline by itself is pretty dumb. It's just a girl that likes two guys 
and is making a really dumb decision right so now. So take the main character storyline and let's say it was like really good. Would you say then that the episode, like you would recommend it to other people? I would still recommend it to other people, but I would g- give a caveat that this is definitely a teen girl's show. <laughs> it's for girls. However, it also has wit and a little bit of charm and the John McEnroe like wild card behind it. The fact that it's just this what 60 year old man who's like a professional athlete <laughs> yeah, he, he's talking not. he's omniscient and he also um he knows who he is like he talks about himself yeah he starts off the show being like i know why you're wondering why john McEnroe is narrating the story and he's not like her inner dialogue uh, in her own mind he's not speaking as it's not her most be or anything he's, like yes that, yeah. he's also not like um in everybody hates chris he's mm-hmm. not playing that character So that's what's crazy about him actually showing up at the finale of last season. So in this season, though, we start off, she's kissing Ben just as she was at the end of last season. Her mom catches her, gets angry, but they're already planning to move to India. And that's really what this season is about. I think it's going to be about how quickly does that decision turn into, oh, we're going to stay in L.A. another year. Right, yeah, exactly. And it also, uh, do you know the age difference between Debbie and Paxson? Between, I guess. Davy, Davy and Paxton. And Paxton um, yeah. I, I, I assume because once I saw uh, uh, ten years. Eleven, <laughs> actually. Okay, because yeah, he's she, way older, right? But yeah, he's he's thirty. She's nineteen. She, he's thirty. Yeah, and the the crazier part about it is that Ben, the person who plays uh, him, he's twenty years old. Yeah, so. I mean, he still looks young. I can see how, like, when you said Paxton. And Davy, I, I could tell who was older, obviously, because so how old is what's her face, Davy? Davy, she's nineteen. She's nineteen. But now. yeah, like so, she was eighteen when the show first started. But Jaron Lewison, who plays Ben Gross, he was still like a full time college student as he was shooting this scene. So it's crazy. I haven't to seen him in like, much else. And the nice yeah. thing is, he's a dick, and he also is, as they said, like he is um, full of himself. Mm-hmm. But he's not so much of a character that you just hate him. A lot of people, when they're the nemesis, right. but also like the love interest, they're right. kind of like. <laughs> I'm going to be all sleazy and you're going to like me for it. Right, exactly. But instead, he's 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 too, like, innocent, I guess, to pull off. He just did a nice thing in this episode, which was he apparently, when he was kissing um, a Davey, Davey, he realized that because he has a girlfriend, technically, he has to break up with her. And so that's what Reminds he does of yeah. off of off of the screen. So when Davy comes to break up with him, because originally she chooses Paxton because of his looks, and she brings C's candy with her, like a <laughs> box of C's candy, I immediately yeah. recognized that. I was like, oh, okay, that's funny. Um, but he's like, yeah, I broke up with her because I really want to be with you, and that's what. And then he sort of force kisses her, and then it, that happens a couple times in the ep- couple times in the episode. She gets force kiss, but then like likes it. So yeah, that's strange. So it was odd. You, you, you've talked <laughs> about yeah. It basically kept on happening where she was gonna break up with one of them, and then that person kissed her, and then she was like, "I'm not gonna break up with you anymore." <laughs> <laughs> and then that's obviously what leads her to a final decision. Do you, you talk about the pros and cons on the whiteboard that scene, right? Yes. I feel like I've seen that in a million comedies. You had the Friends reunion, which did it, but the one that really brings to mind is the How I Met Your Mother one, where Barney's trying to figure out which person sent him, like, a letter that he slept with. If you want to find, like, an identical plot line, it's awkward. The show Awkward, um, there was mm, there okay. were, there was a guy and two guys, and she kept on trying to figure out which one to date because she liked them both, and that was the extent of it. There was some other plot line about her having faked, or not... She hadn't really tried to kill herself, but everybody thought that she did. Mm. But but that was kind of the wild card in that one. But that was MTV. I, I really wish I got to that sooner because I had Pen15, Chad, and Awkward. And I wanted to see which is like kind of what the similarities Chad, and differences were. It's was. similar because it's trying. It, Chad was trying to say, hey, here's my Pakistani family, right? They are mm-hmm. Pakistani. Yeah, exactly. Um, And Nassim Pedrad, that's why she was playing that character, is because she wanted to bring an element to that. This was made, and I wouldn't have known this other than I saw the Wikipedia page really quickly. It's Mindy Kaling, right? Yeah, based and on she, her life. She really good job. Like, usually I'm not as huge a fan of Mindy Kaling as a lot of people I think are, like mm-hmm. from her work on The Office and, and after that. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it was, she had the Mindy Kaling project. The Mindy project. Yeah. The Mindy <laughs> project. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I watched an episode of that because I was not really interested in it. But if she's the one who's been like 
dictating this is sort of where I want the show to go. I think she did a really good okay, job. Okay, completely. Like, Davy, uh, sorry, and the main actress, Matre Ramakrishnan, she ended up going into the audition room and she saw Mindy Kaling thinking she wasn't going to get the audition. Guess how many people auditioned for that main role? Just, just guess. It was 15,000. 15,000 people. I found that crazy. It reminds me of with Skins. In the first season of Skins, uh, the UK version, they literally had like a couple hundred at most kids come mm-hmm. come through. But then it got so big so quick that they the next, like, see, the series, which was not nearly as good. Um, oh, you're talking about the next, like, kind of new class, like, season yeah, three and people four, were, right? It was so popular the first time. It, it, they didn't get better actors the second time. It was, like, less organic. So I even though they got 15,000 people or whatever mm-hmm. to audition, 1,500 well, or 15,000. It was 15,000 for Deb, just Davy. Yeah. Just her. They still picked the right one. The mm-hmm. funny thing is, though, there are three Davies in this episode because there's a flashback, and each one looks like her. It's like Cruel Summer almost in that way right but obviously more comical it's it's less than like a second that we see the other ones it was just to show her having the crush throughout like her entire childhood on paxton so you saw (laughs) a young her and a young paxton but the younger versions of her literally look like de-ageified her so it was it was really good casting the only other one i want to see if the show was kind of similar to was on my block i know that's more because it's because it's based in la right and isn't uh, on my block Uh, is also really close to la it's shot in la i think that the actual show is shot uh, is supposed to be in boston that's where it's supposed to take on my place. block no oh no, no 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 not sorry uh for uh never have i ever i disagree i by. think it's supposed to be in la well they, definitely... they literally are cleaning up a park that the history teacher is like a hippie so he takes the entire class to a park in this episode and and um at this point uh davy is more into ben because um, Paxton screwed up the date because he invited yeah. he invited uh, Stonks or Stoics <laughs> Stonks <laughs> Trent Stonks. Um, no, so so they're picking up trash and he literally pulls up a headshot that is just on the ground and he's like, "What sort of trash lives here?" And then also she's like, "I found a silicon like boob or something on the oh, ground." Okay, I'm yeah. pretty sure that they're in LA. Okay, but it, like, did you see any guest stars this episode? Because it's supposed to have one main one that shows up. Uh, her, uh, her sister is... No, I don't know. You don't? No, okay, yeah. Well, Common is apparently in the season. Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. You're, okay, okay yeah. so the mom storyline, which is probably more interesting than hers is as far as not being as cliche, mm-hmm. she's obviously moving her two kids. So she's a doctor. She's got a ton of clients. And she goes to this competitor doctor. And she's like, I want to sell him my client list like some sort of weird sales thing for $100,000. And so Common comes out and his name is Dr. Christopher Jackson. And this is another reason why I think it's LA is because he is the same doctor. He has pictures of uh, him and Hugh Jackman. And she's like, oh my God, so you know Hugh Jackman? He's like, oh, I just call him Hugh. I I forget he's famous because we we just hang out all the time. Um, He doesn't want to pay for the thing. He's like, I'll give you $10,000 for it. But at the end, in the end, she, she agrees and they steal a bunch of his like freebie stuff, like skincare routines. Right. Stuff. Yeah. But the reason I probably didn't recognize him is because I'm used to seeing him in like John Wick and in this he was he just walked out there. And, yeah. Well, I read, a, I read a funny article that was like, why does the doctor from Never Have I Ever look so familiar? And I was like, it's common. Like, why are you writing an article? He, like, has, a beard. he has a beard. So he looks a little bit different. But yeah, I should have recognized him. Um, I accidentally gave away actually one of my facts for my three uh, facts one lie game. Uh, it was the one with the 11 years age difference. But if you can guess the uh, false, so now you have 33% chance of gaining it. This show follows many others that are coming out in July and many other teen shows like Outer Banks, Atypical, and Virgin River. However, this Whoa, one... Whoa, you just went over those real quick. Outer Banks, obviously, we're aware of that when we did that one as a podcast, right? Outer Banks? No, no, no. Outer Banks is the one with Chibestin and the one that kept on being promoted on the MTV thing. Outer Banks. You know why I thought we did that? Why? Because <laughs> Panic has that one character that he looks a very similar to the Outer Banks dude. Remember? I think I said it at the time. You're talking about the person that didn't apologize for showing up late to this audition, right? Yeah. And then after that, you know, when we did the High School Musical podcast? Right, um, yeah. High School Musical, the musical or whatever? Yeah. In the first season of that, the main character shows up late to their audition. So oh, it, right. it definitely feels like he... <laughs> 
crafted his character to show up late on purpose. But anyways, moving back. So you said Atypical 2, which is the the autistic show, and that guy's finally moving into apartment. And his own apartment, I remember seeing the ad for that. And then Virgin River. I I think that might be a new show. I'm not sure, though. Virgin River. I'm not sure about that one. Um, Yeah, but this one has gotten a lot of praise for being a watershed moment uh, for having to focus on a South Asian representation that's part of the... A uh, fact. Why and is your then, voice getting lower? <laughs> <laughs> the, the next one is Rama Krishnan, the main actress, didn't know who John McEnroe was until they shot his cameo in the season one finale. Yeah, that's what's so great about it. It's like you can tell it's just so out of the box in comparison to the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. And the nice thing is, like with Chad, you get these jokes that are so almost cruel that Nassim Pedrad does. Yeah, to no, herself. I, remember, I remember you saying that. Yeah. Like she, she plays her character to be not liked to begin with. But this character, it's like she's in a family, and yes, they're traditional a little bit, but at the same time, they're also kind of pushing the envelope away from tradition. Like, the reason mo- the mom wants to move back is because she's afraid. By the way, you know the dad who who passed away in the first season? Yeah, he was, he was uh, played uh, by Mohinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mohinder. Yeah, I know. I read that, and I completely forgot about it until they showed flashbacks, and I read about it. But the final... You hear his voice in this episode. He has a uh, voice but recording. And so it... I hope he sticks around and backflashes. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. And then the last one is the series was confirmed for season three. So you I have... was going to say, I wrote it down. I said, this season, it, this is going to get at least four seasons. Because that, think, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, I, I was so sure. And it's not going to take place in India next year. Maybe they go to India for a little bit and they do a time jump. But it's going to definitely not be... Fo- because then how would they have well, the main characters? But again, one of these is false. It's still the show follows many others that are coming out in July. You have the one where she didn't know who John McEnroe was in the finale. Or that the series was confirmed for season three. Wait, so... One of these is false. Oh, one of those... I thought those were all just true. Um, well, two of them are true. Okay, uh... The McEnroe one, did she know who that was? No, she didn't know who that was. She didn't know who McEnroe was, <laughs> she, okay. She, yeah, she looked it's him up It's funny, because if onset. you think about Andy Samberg, because I just like that right. episode so much that he was in last season. And you're going to get another uh, guest I, star yeah, episode, yeah. but th- it was originally supposed to be voiced by Chrissy Teigen until she stepped down for obvious reasons, but yeah, go ahead. For real? Yeah. So then, was it going to be one of her two friends? I'm trying to figure out. I, I don't want to give away who it is because it is a yeah, guest star. Yeah, that would be a spoiler. But the, the series, but it, the fake one was the series was confirmed for season three. I think it is going to be confirmed, but that would have been crazy because season two hadn't even come out yet. I thought it was point. like one of those ones where they renewed it for two seasons, but knowing Netflix, they don't usually do that. So I probably should have gotten that. Something so. that I read was that the show really wanted to focus on Debbie because not in a mean way, but like it focuses on her rage kind of as a teenager, and you don't usually see that, especially with like the diversity that the cast has and it's got a lot of uh good critical reception for kind of breaking stereotypes did you see that in this episode it feels like you're saying yeah because it's not like she doesn't have an accent and her parents don't and her mom and her sister don't have an accent but there's such wit behind some of the jokes where again if you just look at her storyline dumb as dumb can be (laughs) it would be unbearable to watch in most formats but they make it work. I and did. so overall, I give it a tomato, <laughs> as my Rotten Tomatoes friends might think. I, I, I did find it funny that um, when I was kind of watching some interviews, apparently Mindy Kaling had to keep on going to the mom when she was in her scenes with uh, Common because she lost her accent a lot of the time because she... It's very really, strong. <laughs> but she like really liked him, so, she, so Mindy Kaling had to keep on telling her. How's, how is Camelot portrayed in this season, though? Because it's supposed to be kind of a switch. So she's smart, but she's hot, and so her sister is jealous of her. Davy's character is a little jealous of her sister, but the, in a sisterly way. Um, yeah, there were foils in the first season, and now it's supposed to kind of be that Davy is, like, following in uh, Camelot's footsteps, and she's supposed to be more of almost a teacher. Um, from what I remember, the tension was really between Davy and her mom last season. I don't remember it as much between her and her sister, but again, we just skipped through it, so... That might be false, right, right. but her her storyline, at least Camilla's storyline in this episode, is about how she's starting a new residency, um, working on her research because she's really smart. But she's judged prematurely by her looks, so she goes to um, this place without studying gallstones. There's this really a smart guy who's in charge, but she's not even allowed to speak to him. And the rest of the lab kind of makes fun of her and is also like really gross and nerdy. Mm-hmm, yeah. And they don't want to like let her do anything but clean beakers, probably because they just think that she can't do anything mm-hmm. but clean beakers. And so she's mostly pissed off about that. Again, the show's plot lines aren't like amazing. The comedy isn't just laugh out loud, funny every joke. However, there is enough wit and charm in it that it 
is perfectly acceptable if you just want to skim through episodes until you find uh, something that you really like. Uh, yeah, I've read it. Like, you'll find something that has heart. I've seen a lot of people call it bingeable, and it seems like Davey, Fabio, and Eleanor, the actress that play them, are, like, actually best friends. Like, they're, they're Is so Eleanor many... older, though? Because you were talking about the age I, I didn't difference. See, I didn't see her She's, age. She reminds me, or I think I've seen her in something else. Actually, I think Fabio and I think about might be older than Eleanor, but don't quote me on that. But are the references new in the show? Because they're making, because like the three of them are making yes, like TikToks culture, and Instagram and like they're, they're making stuff. videos. Yeah. Except uh, was was her name Fab Fabiola? Fabiola. She obviously in her character doesn't understand or ha- hasn't paid attention to pop culture. Like pop culture to her is knowing what BB-8 is. <laughs> yeah. So the show has gotten good reviews. It has a 7.9 on IMDb. The first season got 96%. The second season's just come out, so you can't really trust the IMDb scores, but it has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. However, some of the reviews are kind of the same, what you're saying, where it's like three and a half, three out of five, where they really like Davey. They think that she does a great job in the show. I think show. that her decision at the end was the stupidest thing, and it doesn't make any sense as far as if she plans to implement it. Like, where is she going to go with it? How is she really going to uh, make it so that Ben and Paxton aren't aware of each other? You asked me at the beginning who she should end Mm -hmm. up being with. I think it's pretty clear that she's going to be with Ben because, again, Paxton may be good-hearted, but he doesn't connect with her on a, like, mental level. Well, I won't give anything away, but by the end of the season, you will get an answer. Mm -hmm. So... With that being said, though, um, I, I guess I should probably bring about how the show came to be. Netflix basically approached Mindy Kaling, and originally she didn't want to do the show, but then she like saw all the writers' rooms and th- knew she was going to be able to get John McEnroe when she went to an art gallery. The, yes. ma- the reason why it was him was because her father's a big fan of them and everything. Well, it's perfect because Andy Samberg did the like the Seven Days in Hell or whatever where right. he was playing. Where they were both in it. John McEnroe was he in it? Oh yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and back and was just like a legit crazy option to put into your show well there's a reason they did it because again davy kind of makes her decisions off of rage and john McEnroe was really mad whenever he played tennis so that's a huge reason why they wanted to get him for the show as it they kind of parallel you keep on saying other. rage but she just doesn't seem that like that too angry of a character to me like she'll get worked up but she doesn't seem like she's just you well, know. That, I think that's. I, what, I know what you're saying. Yeah. they did have a talk last season where they basically discussed that, and that's why she agreed at the end to go to India with her mom, and mm-hmm. she's kind of settled with that for now. Do you have any idea how they chose the title for this, though? Oh no, I, I didn't because never have I that. ever sounds like a horror movie. Well, yeah, it sounds like Truth or Dare. Exactly. You just it sounds you, like you take a you take a game the sequel that's well to known. Truth or Dare, <laughs> and then oh, you want to do that. How about Spin the Bottle? <laughs> Spin the Bottle sounds like a real scary movie. <laughs> well, you already have Tag. You have Would You Rather. You Would You Rather. Yes. Yeah. The Would You yeah. Rather, um, Never Have I Ever, and Truth and Dare, Truth or Dare sound like they could be legit horror films. Like, like a movie trilogy horror, horror films. <laughs> yes. But Spin the Bottle. Like, that, that's obviously a comedy. That is the... Um, that is the uh, Wayne's Brothers version. I was gonna say of the Truth Mike Epps parody. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, Den of Geek said season two of this high key self referential comedy is funnier, more confident, and delves deeper into its characters. That was probably the best uh, review that I found for it. Anybody, anything compared to Blackish? Nothing that I saw, but people were very happy that it focused on Indian because of the representation. Family. Representation, yeah. yeah. They also made a Hollywood joke that was that was pretty. There was an ABN award that was in in the park <laughs> that, right. that they were cleaning up. Yeah, and it was like for best <laughs> milf of the year or something. And they were like, "This is just sad." <laughs> well, the first season yeah. had like a ton of viewership. It got over like I think forty eight million views. Yes. So I can only imagine that season two it might even be bigger. I mean it doesn't usually grow the second season but it'll probably retain a huge audience yeah i, th- I think it's gonna get a season three though season point. three and season four i think it ends after four seasons probably i don't see how you can really do it past that i think they're going to i don't i think mindy Kaling was even asked about if they would go to, into college and i think she said no i think they just want to kind of keep it at the high school level and then she gets hired by the office no 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 but davy was a huge fan of the office she even asked for a pick during her audition there was a lot of interviews with her she seems like really charismatic anyways that's all i have All right. Well, thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye.